I'm Xerxes, a developer advocate here at Google, back again in our AdWords API series. In this episode, we'll examine how you can use the API to make updates to your AdWords accounts. We'll look at a few popular use cases and see how they serve as a basis for almost any kind of automation. One of the most common use cases of the API is to pause and resume ad groups. For example, you could pause an ad when the inventory for that item is depleted, resulting in better use of your advertising budget. This highlights the power of integrating your own systems with the AdWords API. So, how would you actually pause and resume an ad group? Remember from the last video? The code samples are your friends. You should have them downloaded by now, but if you don't, you can grab them from here. Again, we'll be using Java and Eclipse, but the concepts are the same for all the client library languages. Fire up Eclipse and open updateadgroup.java. We see our typical boilerplate in main. This time, you'll notice that main has a placeholder string for the ID of the ad group. Where would we get that ID? Well, you could get it programmatically through the get method of the ad group service interface. One unofficial trick that I use for testing is to grab the ID from the URL of the AdWords web interface when viewing an ad group. As usual, the run example method has the interesting code. First, it gets a reference to the ad group service interface because it'll be making an update to an ad group. To update other entities, you would use their corresponding service. A full list of available services can be found here. Then, it creates a new ad group object. It sets the ID of the new object to the ID of the ad group that it wants to update. Then, it sets the status to paused. After that, it creates an ad group operation using our newly created ad group object as the operand and set as the operator. Lastly, it calls the mutate method of the ad group service interface, passing in the ad group operation object. So go ahead and replace the placeholder with an ad group ID from your test client account and try running the code. After it runs, log into the test account in the web interface and confirm the status has been changed. The same pattern is used for most updates through the API. So let's review it here. Create a new object. Set its ID to be the ID of the entity you want to modify. Set the new value of the property on that new object. Create an operation object with set as the operator and this new entity object as the operand. And lastly, pass the operation object into the mutate method of the appropriate service. This is an update, so we use the set operator. Adds or removals would use the add or remove operators. If this seems confusing, take a look at other pieces of sample code in this project. You'll quickly see the pattern. So now that we know this pattern, we can easily make other updates as well, though many require more complex objects than the ad group status enum we used here. For example, another popular use case is to modify the bid for an ad group programmatically. The canonical example is raising the bid for an umbrella ad when it's raining. Your app could consume a weather web service and then use the AdWords API to increase the bid for this ad group. You could modify the same update ad group sample code to make that kind of update. Instead of setting the ad group status, you would set the bidding strategy. Click this link for details on how to configure a bidding strategy. Another use case is creating new campaigns. In Eclipse, take a look at adcampaigns.java. It's quite a bit of code, but it follows the pattern we just discussed. In this case, once the object hierarchy is created, we use the add operator to add a new budget via the budget service and new campaigns via the campaign service. We don't need to set the IDs here because these are new entities and don't have IDs yet. Those are just a few examples of updates using the API. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. 
I highly recommend you go through the code samples as they really are the best way to learn this API. We have accomplished a lot in these last five videos. You made your first API call, retrieved reports, and got a taste of automation. Of course, there's additional API functionality to learn. These guides will definitely help you along the way. Now, you're ready to start building your own real AdWords API application. And once it's up and running, you'll see increased operating efficiency through automation and greater visibility through custom reporting. Thanks so much for being with us through these initial steps. And keep an eye out for more AdWords API videos on the Google Developers channel.